Conor McGregor going into this fight, uh, he's not the same fighter. And over the last seven fights, Conor McGregor was going into this fight. He was three and three. He really should have been uh, three and four because I believe he lost the second Nate Diaz fight. Two and four. No, I'm, I'm sorry, two and four. He really lost the Nate Diaz fight. But they, the UFC wanted to give Conor McGregor that win. It was a very close fight. And if Conor lost that fight, Conor's career could have been over. But not only that, looking at going into this fight on Saturday night, Conor McGregor took a whole nother path on attacking Poirier. And Poirier didn't take the bait. He didn't take the bait. He didn't care what Conor said at the press conferences, taking shots at his wife, taking shots at his whole family, taking shots at Poirier's game and that he's not a great fighter and that he's a washed up, so-called uh, top-end fighter and that uh, he was going to knock him out in the first two or three rounds. That didn't happen on Saturday night. And on Saturday night, in the first round, and I, 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 I see the confidence in Conor McGregor. And, and, and by the way, he is a great salesman. He is a talented fighter. He's one of the greatest UFC fighters of our era. Not even a question. And he really changed the game, the fight game. And as far as the MMA world, he's the one who brought money and fame to the UFC. No question that he did. But on Saturday night... He took a whole, a, a completely all-time low after the fight. Now, uh, going into the fight and walking into the ring, uh, and, and when that ring, when that bell went off, I believed uh, that Conor laid the first punch in that first left-handed hook shot at Poirier, and it shook Poirier. And Poirier admitted it. He caught him, and it was a great shot. But then he started throwing check kicks and kicks, and you saw that he was trying to do exactly what Poirier did. In, in, in fight number two, which Poirier dominated the fight by kicking uh, low calf shots, which eventually completely uh, hurt Conor McGregor's leg, and Conor couldn't fight anymore moving into the second round. And he eventually got knocked down. He complained about his leg. Now, Conor McGregor started throwing legs, and I believe on one of those check kicks, he broke his tibula, cracked his tibula. Then he, got, he fell to the ground. He got, he, Poirier got him on the ground and took him down and then completely started laying elbow shots after elbow shots after elbow shots and then eventually let Connor stand up because he wanted to beat him standing up at his own game. Connor threw a, a kick and then threw a punch, missed on the punch, fell back on his leg, and broke his tibula and his ankle. Now... Uh, obviously, then crying to the referee that he wanted to make sure that it was a referee stoppage, that it wasn't a knockout, a TKO, because he didn't want that really added to his, I guess, win-loss record, which is it's already on his win-loss record. But he, he wanted to make sure that it didn't, it didn't affect his win-loss record. Now, on, on record, he lost that fight by a TKO. Um, and to me, when, when you watch that fight, and, and, and I don't think that fight would have went past the second round. I really don't. Conor McGregor was getting his butt whipped. And if, if I were to grade that first round, it was 10-8 Poirier. So if it went to a second round, I believe Poirier would have knocked him out and completely dominated that uh, second round and completely torched him. But that wasn't even really the thing that really stuck out to me. What stuck out to me is after the fight, when he was laying down and they were putting... Uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, something on his leg to a boot on his leg is what he was saying to uh, Poirier. Tell, telling him that he was going to kill him. He pointed, pointed to Poirier and pointed to his wife and put a gun to his head saying that he's going to completely kill them. And that pissed off Poirier. And that after Joe Rogan in interviewed Conor McGregor, he interviewed Poirier. Poirier, if he wasn't held back by uh, the referee and the security guard, uh, security guards in the ring, he would have attacked Conor McGregor and tried to kill the guy. It was absolutely embarrassing what Conor McGregor did. And to me, the UFC should absolutely fine Conor McGregor for what he said and, and the disrupting, disgusting things that he said about Poirier and his family and his wife and telling this guy is one of the best fighters right now in the UFC at the 155 division. I believe he should be champion. If he didn't want to fight Conor McGregor, and he didn't want to fight Conor McGregor for the money, Poirier would be the champion. He would be the champion. And, and he's going to get a chance to fight for that belt either in November or December. But Conor McGregor, his career is done. 
I said that on the segment on the Weekend Crunch. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's the same fighter. I don't think he is as hungry as he was. He he really rushed into this fight. I think he should have taken a little bit more time uh, with his camp and figured things out. It, every The whole game plan of going into this fight was wrong. You are not... When, when you know that Poirier, his game now is... Calf kicks, calf kicks, calf kicks. And even after the end of the fight, when they were talking about his upcoming championship fight, he said, well, how do you expect to win your next fight? Calf kicks. You know that that is his strength. That's what he is going to do. That's what he has been working on and really has completely changed his fight, his fight game, his fight training. Now, I don't know. I believe Conor McGregor will fight again. And I, I think he wants to fight Poirier for a fourth fight I, I I think Dana White Dana White will oblige him, but if Poirier wins the championship in November or December, he's not going to get a title fight a title fight right away. He's going to have to fight one fight, maybe two fights before he has the chance to fight for the title for Poirier, unless Poirier allows it and demands it. But to me, going into this particular uh, bout, Conor McGregor had it all wrong. I think I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to sell. Uh, sell um, pay-per-view. He wants to sell the seats. He wants to put fannies in the seats. Absolutely did. But the embarrassment, and and what are the fans doing? Tyler, I mean, what they were doing after the fight was absolutely embarrassing. Ole, 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 ole. Social media taking shots at Poirier. And and Poirier is really the good guy. Conor McGregor was the bad guy in this fight. And for some reason, these young MMA um, fans love Conor McGregor. Love this disgusting things that he has said on and off and out of the octagon. I, I mean, it's so disrupted, so disgusting, and so uh, legitimately um, unsellable to anybody that uh, respects MMA and where MMA is going. I, I want to know your opinion. What was your thoughts to the whole Conor McGregor debacle, and, and what do you think the UFC should do to him? <laughs> um. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely nobody because Champ does what Champ wants. I'm just kidding. Uh, that's obviously an old McGregor saying, and he's not the champ anymore. But So there's a lot of different ways, right? And ironically, you, I think Poirier probably would have won the fight. Um, I do not think it would have gone two rounds. I think McGregor would have got him four or five rounds just because of the fear of Poirier getting knocked out. Probably would have held him back some. But... Um, there's a lot of blame to go around for why Conor McGregor is how he is. And ironically, I think the biggest piece of blame is the UFC themselves. I think Dana White saw how Vince McMahon does business and how boxing did business. And he said, oh, shit, Floyd Mayweather is the biggest draw in the history of anything because he's a bad guy and people want to see him lose. Conor, we're going to allow you to box this dude. Pick his brain. If you really think McGregor and Mayweather hate each other, then you, I got a Brooklyn Bridge I'd like to sell you. Because that was pure magic what those two put on together. Pure magic. There's no reason we should have bought that fight. There's no reason at all. But those two made you think they hated each other, so you bought the fight. That fight was an absolute staged event that was like Ali going over to Japan and boxing a wrestler. It makes no sense. But money draws. So McGregor draws. And now he learned that and he's bringing it to the UFC. Do I think there's actual hatred between him and Poirier? 100%. Those two probably really don't like each other. Um, But again, if you're Poirier, let's be honest. McGregor put you on the map. McGregor put you on the map. At the time of the second fight, Poirier probably didn't deserve the match with McGregor. Or the fight, rather. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, Uh, he did. He won won 12 out of his last 14 fights. I get that. Look who he's fought. Look who he's beaten. He's beaten some of the best fighters in the UFC. Go look at his record. If you go down, up and down the roster of player fighters that he has fought. Go look at Conor McGregor and who's, who he fought in his last seven fights. The only good fighters that he's fought in, in the last two fights Diaz. is it, it, Diaz. Nate Diaz is not a good fighter. What has uh, Nate Diaz ever won? Nate Diaz has never been a champion. No, he has not. But again, you got to look at the politics of that. And then you got to look at... beat Justin Gagey. He was a champion. Yeah, yeah. Go look at... Go look at who Borea, Borea, Borea has beaten in his last 12 fights. Borea. You Borea. may have the right on the head. Borea. Because well, Dustin Borea. Borea needed this fight He is McGregor. the best all-around fighter. He's on the map now. 
Oh, he's been on the he map for a long, long time. He didn't need this third fight. He wanted the third fight. Honestly, he should have been the ch- he's he would have been the champion if if he didn't fight Conor McGregor. He was getting a That's title fine. shot. He was the number one That's contender fine. for the last past year. But McGregor, let's be honest about something. If McGregor really wanted a title fight instead of the fight with Poirier, Dana White would have gave him. No, a title he wouldn't fight. have. He wasn't. Um, he needed to. He needed to beat somebody on the roster. He needed to beat the number one contender, and the number one contender was uh, Dustin Poirier. He was the number one contender, and he would have been the champion. Because uh, Oliveira, he wouldn't, and I love Charles Oliveira. He deserves all the credit in the world. He's just like Dustin Poirier. Ten years in the UFC, never got to his respect, fought in two different weight classes, and he had to move up to get his title shot, and he is the champion. But I'm telling you right now, Dustin Poirier is the best all-around fighter in 155 division. He is going to be champion. He is going to be Charles Oliveira. And, and b- believe it or not, I don't think I don't think Conor McGregor has it in him anymore. I think he's done. He's over. And to me, I just I mean, think it's disgusting as a fighter what he has said on and off and out of the octagon. Yes, he sells and he puts fannies in the seats. He's box office, no question that he is, and he's still a great fighter. His game, his fighting style hasn't grown. Look at Dustin Poirier. The last time he fought Conor McGregor, the first fight he fought Conor McGregor, he wasn't as all around as he is now. He's become a stand up fighter. He was a Brazilian black belt, Brazilian jiu jitsu black belt, great wrestler, great takedown uh, defense. This guy is as good a fighter, all around fighter in the UFC uh, as what they have right now on their roster. Well, you really want to know what I think? I think Conor McGregor's been checked out of UFC because the WWE's got a bigger contract waiting for him than Dana White could pay him. And now you've also got McGregor going, I don't have to really get punched or kicked. I don't have to break my tibia. I don't have to get my eyeballs socked, knocked in. All right, I'll go. And Dana White probably gave him a pretty lump sum. Hey, listen, we need at least one more fight out of you, the AA, the Poirier fight. And now McGregor lost. He felt embarrassed, and he demanded the third one. He's going to get a fourth one because, honestly, I don't think anyone should take any malice in that fight at all because McGregor, like you said, the game plan was whack. If I'm McGregor, I would have went out there and just started throwing hay bombs. Well... I, I watched the fight, and I and I watched the fight over again uh, over the weekend on Sunday. Conor McGregor kept saying that he won that round. If he didn't break his leg, he would have. They would have given him that round. He had no shot at winning that round. He was completely dominated. He had three maybe really good shots. The first shot in the first round when the when the uh, when the bell went off, he uh, he he uh, landed a great left uh, left hook on Poirier, which shook Poirier. After that, Poirier wanted to stand with him. Poirier wanted to take punches from him. He actually let Conor McGregor get up with the last 15, 20 seconds of the round because he wanted to knock Conor McGregor out. And Conor just missed. And I believe his his tibia, his tibia, or his labrum, uh, I think it was his tibia, right? Yeah, his, tibia his tibia was already cracked before he got caught, before probably. he hurt his he leg. He probably did because you normally don't have your bone break as it breaks. It's normally broken before that. You don't realize it, and then it snaps. But the thing about McGregor really is, and this is what people aren't going to like, the man's above the UFC, and he's going to call his own shots. So if he doesn't want to come back, he's not coming back. Oh, he's coming back. And he there's only fight two again. fights. There's two fights he's going to take. Nate Diaz and Poirier. No, well, Poirier, and he wants Khabib. Khabib is not coming back. And to be honest with you, I think Khabib's a little bit of a you know what, for avoiding Conor McGregor the second time. Well, first of all, he's not avoiding. Because we all deserve that his second father, His father died, yeah, and he retired. Great. He retired. That's great. And he's done, and he's never coming back. He's but coming back. It, they all come back. He's not, he's not coming back. He's coming he, back. I'm telling you, if there's anybody that's not coming back, it's poor. Uh, it's it's kind of, uh, it's, it, I'm sorry. Khabib. It's Khabib, Khabib because his father brother. died, and he already said he will never fight again after his father died. His father passed away, and his mother asked him not to fight again. So he is not fighting again. He made $40 million dollars. From the UFC. He doesn't need to win another championship. He doesn't need to win another fight. The guy is undefeated. He's going to go down as one of the greatest fighters to ever fight in the UFC. And, and by the way, Conor McGregor doesn't stand a chance against Khabib. If he can't oh, no, be Poirier. That's not, that's, but not, that's not what I'm saying. Po- Poirier, I, we all deserve the second fight, though. Yeah, well, Poirier is the, the only fights that he's going to come back to fight in the UFC is Nate Diaz and Poirier. And he will fight Poirier again. Poirier will give him the opportunity to fight again. But it's not going to make a difference because Poirier has gotten better. As he gotten as he as he's become a, a, a more aggressive mixed martial artist, he's been in the fight game for over I think twelve thirteen years with the UFC. He's what 32, 33 years old. He's at the prime of his career. Conor McGregor, you would think, would be in his prime of his career. He's gotten worse. Uh, he was at the prime of his career between twenty five and thirty. 
He is not the same fighter he once was. He puts fannies in the seats because of his craziness on and out of the octagon. We all know what he does, his crazy talk. He's funny. He's energetic. He's he's a comedian. But he's not a fighter anymore. His game and his fight style has not gotten better. 